What's good? Welcome to the first ever virtual Sirius XM Pandora playback. My name is J1, head of hip hop for Pandora. And just to give you a little background about the playback series, we started it last summer and we wanted to create a unique experience where we brought artists together with fans, influencers, DJs, college students in an intimate environment. Well, obviously we're in the middle of a pandemic. COVID-19 is preventing us from doing that live, but we're here today to do it safely. And that's why I'm here with my special guest, who I'm real excited to talk about. Not only is he a very talented artist, he's an accomplished songwriter, and now, most importantly, he is a label owner, a mogul, and owns his own studio, my brother Kate Camp. Make sure you click the link that we provide for you to check out the exclusive playlist and all the great music that we're gonna talk about. Plus, we got a little surprise at the end. You're just gonna have to stay tuned for that. But you know what? I'm done talking. Let's get into the conversation. I'm gonna get on my, my, my soapbox for a second. I just wanna say I'm super proud of you, bro. Thanks, sir. Uh, I, I feel like I've seen your journey from the beginning. Yeah. I've seen the ups and downs, but here you, you still are. Yeah. Not just putting out good music, but like we said, you're running your own label, you're putting out new artists, yes. you're really employing people in the community, mm -hmm. and that's what it's all about, man. So, Once you reach a certain point, you're giving back. So I just wanted to say I'm proud of you. I salute you, you, my brother. I appreciate and it. And keep doing Doing what you're doing but first and foremost how are you how are your people doing during these weird times these crazy times uh i'm blessed i'm good you know what i'm saying trying to stay out of the way trying to stay healthy uh the family good um nieces good everybody's you know what i'm saying as long as they in the house with a mask on they good you yeah. know what i'm saying they're good <laughs> No doubt, man. So obviously 2020 has been kind of a wild year, roller coaster mm -hmm. year. For sure. Uh, but what did you have like planned before everything kind of shut down? Man, before before everything shut down, um, you know, we was dropping the Kiss 5 album and we had the tour coming right after the album. We had the tour, we had the um, the compilation, everything got pushed back. Obviously the tours got canceled. Right. You know what I'm saying? We can't get back on the road to 21. So that was a that was a killer but. You know, that was that was pretty much the main thing I was looking forward to because after I drop an album, I love to get out there with my fans and let them show me that they appreciated the album. Right. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that I dropped a huge album and couldn't experience the feedback from the fans kind of tore me up on an artistry level. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I had to really like find some more motivation to create the Rare Family album. If right. you ask my, uh, my DJ, my business partner, Genius, I was not feeling it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I, was, I was not feeling it. I had him coming in doing the mixes. I was like, bro. I don't, I don't feel like it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just was not in the mode, but, you know, I just, I just had to get out that funk and really just snap back into it. But, you know what I'm saying, my best, you know, the, every, the tours was the biggest thing for me. Stopping a lot of money and just being out there with my fans kind of really, like, put a halt on my on my passion. Right. You feel me? So, right. uh, other than that, you know what I'm saying, I was cool. So, so how had you adjust, though? Like, how'd you get over that? Because I know a lot of artists are dealing with that right now, not being able to touch yeah. the fans how you guys are accustomed to doing. Like, that's a part of your DNA. Yeah, for sure. I ain't, I ain't got over it yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's real. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't gonna sit here and lie. I ain't got over it yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I make music for the fans. I make music to go out there and perform for the fans. So mm -hmm. the fact I can't perform it, it just, like, it take away a big part of making the music, you know right. what I'm saying? So I got to overcome that battle or just, all right, I know what setting I'm in right now and I got to lock in and become that and just record and just hope that I'm going to see my fans in a minute, you know what I'm saying? So that's how I'm on. That, that's the time I'm on right now. Well, hopefully you will get to see your fans sure. and, sure. and we get back yeah. out there because I, I miss the shows too. I, yeah. I miss watching y'all perform yeah, for, for real. Sure. Uh, but let's go back to the beginning. I mean, obviously, you know, represent ATL's North Side. Yes. Um, what What was it that inspired you to get into music? Um, music been in my blood, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. My uncles, my aunties, my grandmas, everybody played a certain instrument. I used to go to my uncle, like, he used to have live jazz band concerts. I used to pull up him. And, and being a little kid back then, I really ain't processing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And my my, my grandma's song, she was in, a, in a, gr a girl group. My auntie was in a girl group. I used to always play the piano at her crib. She tried to teach me how to play the piano, but back then it was just like, you a kid and you just at your auntie house or you at your grandma house, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, but the older I got and, and, I, and I started just falling in line with just music and, and it just really just took over my life and I was like, damn, I was really born to do this shit. You right. know what I'm saying? So it was like, I just fell into it. What, what age did you realize that this was for you? That this was for me. I say ninth grade, how old you is ninth grade? Like 15? Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? When I had a little, I was playing ball. Ball was my first love. I was playing ball my whole life. 
And when I when I uh, tapped into music, just on some on some extra extracurricular type shit with my homies, you know, we used to always be in the studio, and I was always the ones like trying to do the hook. You know, mm -hmm. saying every time my my partners either wanted to hit the trap or go hoop, I was like, hey man, let's 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 record. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's let's get in the pool. You know what I'm saying? So. At that moment, I used to go to the school on the bus, let everybody hear what I did, go to the school, play it like, hey, you fuck with this, you like, you rock with this, you know what I'm saying? So I think it was that moment where, you know, like I said, back then you don't realize it, but it's a calling, but you really don't, you ain't tapped into it yet. And then when I didn't make my 12th grade basketball team, I broke my ankle. Oh, wow. That's when it was just like, what the hell am I about to do? Yeah. And I knew I had like at least one backup plan. I was making music, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I just kept going, I kept going. But it worked out for it you. Worked out for me, dog. So I remember when you were coming up through the the city through the mix mixtape game. Yeah. But you had a very smart strategy because like most artists that were doing mixtapes at the time, they would like mess with a handful of DJs. Mm -hmm. Usually they'd go to scream and drama, yeah. of course, who were the mixtape right, guys. Right, right. right. There. There was the guys back then. But you did mixtapes not only with them, but damn near every DJ in the city. Mm -hmm. I, I remember I was one of them. For sure, for sure. <laughs> how, how did you come up with that plan of action? Because we was tapped into the streets. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of folks just see online uh, who the hottest DJ and they want to go straight to it. You got to understand, we was what, 17, 16, 17, 18 in every club. I can't even name the clubs or the names or whatever you know. Yeah, we, I remember. We I was young was, niggas. We was yeah, out there. You, you know what I'm saying? Up. We was on the east side. We was on the west side, <laughs> the north side, the south side. Every club that you could think of, we was in, so we knew who was that guy in that in that area. So you know, what I'm saying just having that knowledge of that time, just oh, I'm about to, I'm about to let him do my tape. I let him do my tape. You know, what right, I'm saying right, right. Screaming, I'm taxing. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Like screaming, though. They was taxing. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I was like, well, I can't afford that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go to the next best one. You know what I'm saying? We tapping into the street, so we know who popping. So. That's really like how we went about it, you know what I'm saying? Back then, we was all, you know what I'm saying? We was all broke. We was all penny pinching trying to figure it out. No, that's real, man. I mean, you you made that solid uh, connection with the DJs. Sure. Now, do you think it's as important to have a connection with the DJs because, you know, there's so many artists right now that's popping off due to streaming yeah. and how big it's become. Yeah. They're popping off without even touching the streets, without even touching yeah. the DJs. Sure. So do you feel that relationship is still valid and needed? I feel like that relationship is definitely still valid. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, you can you it's a lane nowadays where you can you can blow up without the streets and the DJs. Right. But you gotta understand, like, without that connection, you really ain't gonna have that presence in the streets. You know what I'm saying? A, a DJ can like your record but not know you and be like, uh, eh, all right, you know what I'm saying, we off that. A DJ can really have that personal connection with you, be like, it's hey, my dog, I'm gonna make sure this shit going. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 gonna tap in and make sure he's going. So it's always good. It's two worlds. You know what I'm saying? You guys just know how to play it. I come from the, the old way. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't want right. to sound like I'm old school, but <laughs> I come from the, you know what I'm saying? What you want to drink? You know right, what I'm saying? Spin right. this shit. You feel me? So I'm going to always have that like guerrilla marketing style and just, but that's how you take over. A lot of folks don't understand. You can have that way with just the streaming, but if you really want to take some shit over, mm -hmm. prime example, QC. Yeah. They stuck to that guerrilla marketing. They stuck to the old school way and, and still tapped into the new way. You take over that way, you know what I'm saying? You want to stop them. Is, is that the blueprint that you're sticking to with your label? For sure. You know what I'm saying? We sticking to that. You know what I'm saying? We ain't going to switch it up. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know what I'm saying? Like, keep that shit going. I always believed in just... Back, I mean, I used to be on, man, I used to put stickers on McDonald's <laughs> in the comms, I used to put them on chair, man, I used to be, I used to get in trouble for that. I remember I went to, this is 50 in New York, we put stickers all on 50 shit, and they called us and chunked us, I was like, bro, why the fuck y'all put them stickers on this shit? <laughs> we used to be on it just anywhere, you gonna see this shit, man, you gonna see it. No, nah, that's real, man, S some of the old stuff never dies, It don't and, die. And, 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 you know. You got to kind of like just go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. Real talk, man. Let's go to two, uh, 2014. Like you was rolling yeah. during that time. You grinded. It yeah. paid off. Money Baby's platinum. Cut her off is platinum. Comfortable's mm -hmm. platinum. People hitting you left and right for features. What's going through your head at the time? Because it was like you, you had grinded and then you finally, when when you hit, yeah. you took off. I hit. Yeah, you I hit, hit hard. I feel, what was going on through my mind at that time? I thought I was on top of the world. And it's so crazy because after all that, you know what I'm saying, like probably like 2017, I had went back and watched the interview I had did. I think I was in 
nah, not New York. It was Cali, and I was I was popping my shit like they was the exact same question like, what yeah. you gonna do at the bless? And I was like, oh, I'm about to hit them with another one. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I was, you know what I'm saying? And, and I think it was comfortable after that. And you know what I'm saying? After comfortable, that's when shit slowed down. So it made me realize like, damn. I was popping too much shit for my own good. You feel really? what I'm saying? Like, yeah. even though it's it's it's, it's cool and it's it's, it's 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 a beautiful thing when you got confidence, when you, you know, what I'm saying the power of the tongue, you speaking into existence. But you gotta make sure all your ducks in order before you start popping that shit. But at the time, I felt like all my ducks was in order. Mm. So when I looked back, and I was like, Oh, I said that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I said that like. And, and and just and just watching it and knowing I said that and knowing what happened, yeah, I was like, oh, I ain't gonna make that same mistake. I'm still pop my shit. That's right, just who I am right. as a person. But I'm gonna make sure all my shit in order. So when I pop my shit, I can back it up fully. When you say all your ducks weren't in a row, give me an example. What do you mean when you say you didn't really have all your stuff together? I really ain't had full control, bro. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I was just, if you really want to put it in, a, you know what I'm saying, in a in a in a in a way where you can understand, I was a pawn. Mm. I was just a pawn, just uh, what they what they call the front lining. Yeah, gone. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't I didn't infiltrate it all the way to the other side of the board. I'm about <laughs> I'm like a move to t take the king. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> I got my eight up. You feel me? So it's like I look back at that situation and I look back at the situation I'm in now, and it's a whole different story. Yeah, it's a whole different. Just it's it's wired a whole different way, and I can pop my shit. Freely as I want now. That's right. Cause I know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I gotta answer to myself. You feel me? Like if 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 shit was the fuck up, I am I'm, I'm I'm the one to blame. I can't I can't blame nobody else. It was me. That's you know real. What I'm saying? That's real. Now now after that time when you said, you know, things kinda cooled off for you, you know, we always talk about the plaque incident in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Um you, you went out to Cali for a while. You moved to uh, you moved out from Atlanta. To the west side. You went to the west side. Talk about that experience. One, why you moved, and why it was nece necessary for you at that time. Man, I moved to the west because you know what I'm saying. I had I, like I, like you said earlier, I had a good relationship with all the DJs. Right. You know what I'm saying. I feel like you know what I'm saying. Just before before I pop, I knew I knew niggas before who they who was who they was at that time. That's right. Before who they glued, glowed up and became. You know what I'm saying. So yeah. I'm like. You know me, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so during that, you know, saying that plaque shit, I was, I was, I was stepping out. I was, I was seeing what the vibe was in the clubs. You know what I'm saying? Just my regular routines. And when I used to like be like, "What's up, boy?" You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was just like a, "What's up with you?" <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Like, yeah. damn, like your vibe off my nigga. Like, damn, what's going on? You know yeah. what I'm saying? So. I was like, maybe I'm just drunk tonight. Maybe I'm yeah, tripping. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I go to another club. Or it, it ain't gotta be a club, I can just see somebody out and I'll be like, damn, like, yeah. what's the vibe around this motherfucker? Like, I ain't <laughs> feeling the vibe, you feel me? So I was like, you know what? I ain't about to be somewhere I'm not wanted. Right. Pat my shit up to the team. Let's go to LA. Yeah. Let's see what LA about. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wanna move to LA. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, let's see what that shit about. You know what I'm saying? And we went out there and we and we, we had the one of like the best times of our life. Right. You know what I'm saying? We just experienced, like, we really just, all the hard work we put in. We just let it all out in LA. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we've been working hard. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Let's just have some fun. Just to put things in context, for those who don't know what the plaque situation that we're referring to, um, you know, somebody from your team mm -hmm. thought it was a good idea, which it was, to give certain people plaques mm -hmm. on behalf behalf of you. Right. Problem was like you said, you built so many relationships right. and so many people felt they had a hand in your career. Right. Those people didn't get plaques. Right. And, and as DJs, it. DJs have some of the biggest egos, you yeah, know, and I, sure. I'm one, you know, for so sure. I'm speaking about myself for too. For sure, everybody. So, have some of the biggest egos. So when certain DJs didn't get plaques, they felt slighted. Mm -hmm. And talking about it now, it doesn't seem like a big deal. It's like, oh, it's oh, just, it was it's a, just big a plaque. Deal. But, but, but no, people were very sensitive oh, it was about a big it. Deal. And, 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 and it was you, a shit you felt show. it. You, you felt it. Was it was a shit show, bro. Um, so going back to Cali, you say, you know, you guys were having the time of your life. But I remember we talked earlier uh, this year, or it was late last year, and you said you realized you needed to come back to Atlanta. Why? Yeah. I needed to come back to Atlanta because I realized I couldn't get left out of the culture. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I couldn't get left out of the wave that I helped create. I, cre I feel like, you know what I'm saying, as far as, I ain't, I ain't gonna say I helped create, but 
I added to the sound of Atlanta. A lot of folks don't want to give K Camp credit for it. No, you did. But I added you, to a, a big did. sound to this city. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So when while while I was in LA and like I said, I think I said this before, like that's when 21 was bubbling. That's right. That's when, you know what I'm saying, Sonny was locked in. And I, and I seen it, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm real tapped in to what's going on. Mm -hmm. Sonny my dog. So I'm looking at Sonny Page like, who is this dude? <laughs> and, and and folks don't know, I was on one of 21 songs before he popped up. Um, mm. The uh, left foot in. Oh, yeah, 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 I yeah. I was on the yeah. remix. Damn. I got a verse that's still on my computer. Wow. Before 21 popped off, you know what I'm saying? So I seen what was going on in the city, and I was like, damn. And I was, and I was like, oh, this shit changing. Yeah. It's changing quick, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, bro, I don't know what we got to do, but we need to get the fuck back to the city. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get our ass back to the city, because when we stay out here, bro, we're going to be lost in the sauce. We gonna be lost, cause you know, if you if you live in LA, you understand what LA is. LA is just it's smoking mirrors. You can have the yeah. time of your life, but you can get caught up in LA and just be LA. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The culture lives in in Atlanta, in the South, in the city. You know what I'm saying? So it was just it was just really like just going off gut feeling, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like we gotta get back home. I don't know how we gonna when we, once we get back home. I don't know how we gonna fix this yeah. shit. But we got to start by getting back home, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the first step is going back home. And once we got back home, we sat down. We, first thing we did, we got in the studio. We was like, all right, we, gonna, we got to get back in the, in the vibe. Right. And then, we, you know what I'm saying, we connected all the dots and we just kept building, kept building. And now we're here. What do you think makes Atlanta so special? I mean, it was like we took the music scene, we took the hip hop crown. Mm -hmm. And we just never gave it back. Never gave it back. And I don't think we're going to give it back no time. So, <laughs> you feel me? Everybody be doing that thing like L.A., Texas, you know yeah. what I'm saying, New York, and whatever, Florida, you know what I'm saying? Everybody do that thing. But Atlanta just, we breed this shit. Like, we, you know what I'm saying, we birth, like, I ain't say we birthing the, the, the music, you know what I'm saying, right. where it started. But it's like. But the system. The system. Like, it just, yeah. you know what I'm saying, it just keep coming. Yeah. It ain't never going to stop. <laughs> Unless they blow this whole city up, <laughs> this shit ain't never gonna stop. There's always gonna be somebody who coming with some new flavor, new sound, and that's what I love about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and just to be in this motherfucker, like it's so raw. Like, it's just raw. Like you ain't gonna really get this shit nowhere else. What's crazy is when I talk to other artists who aren't from here, mm -hmm. and I ask them about like how it works with their, their city and, and working with other artists from yeah. their city, they always talk about like, we need to get like Atlanta. We yeah. need to have the camaraderie that Atlanta does. Yeah, so for sure. it, it, it's like you said, man, it's just like, it just keeps coming and coming but and coming. But at the same time, you got your different sides in Atlanta. That's true. You know what I'm saying? A lot of folks want to be like Atlanta, but when you come to Atlanta, you know it's like, niggas fuck with each other. Yeah. Like if I was to see Thug or Future or anybody around, What's up, boy? You know what right, I'm saying? Right. You go hard, oh, you go crazy, you're going crazy. But just like high school, when you're coming up, whoever you wit, you wit. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got their own gang. That's real. Everybody, everybody tag along with their own gang. And if you're a part of one gang that's going crazy, and all, all y'all are already locked in from high school or from cop, whatever, you know what I'm saying? From the from the trap, whatever, that's who you wit. Yeah. And if you ain't in that, you looking like the outsider. Mm. That's why you gotta build your own shit. You gotta build your own goddamn team, your own layout, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it becomes like a, you know what I'm saying? I see y'all at the top. Speaking of which, that's what you're doing now. Exactly. And when we last talked, you said you came up with the idea when you were out in Cali. Mm -hmm. And now you came back and you're, you're implementing it. Exactly. Um, what, 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 what do you envision for your, for your label? What I envision, man, you know what I'm saying? The label's called Rare Sound for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Everything that come out of here, I feel like it gotta be rare. It gotta be, it gotta be sounds that it don't sound like shit else out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When folks hear this shit, they're like, damn, what what they got going on? You know what I'm saying? And I and I want the biggest independent independent label in the world. You know mm. what I'm saying? I'm gonna keep saying it. Like, I really feel like we got the chance, the 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 information that we have. In the in the grind that we have, in the talent level that we have, we got the ability to really take this shit to a whole nother level. You know what I'm saying? And, it, and it, it's gonna take that one, that one artist. If it ain't myself, cause I'm I'm gonna keep pushing this shit to the roof. Yeah. You feel me? <laughs> if it ain't me, it's gonna take that one artist that just spark on some, like like when QC got Lil Yachty, that opened up the that opened up the floodgates. You know what I'm saying? You're right. I find right. me a Lil Yachty, it's over with. <laughs> <laughs> it's over with. You know what I'm saying? But it just. On this end, we just we just we just do it like a family, you know what I'm saying? That's why the album's called Rare Family, like everybody around, like, 
I like the artwork for it too. Thank you. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, I think Thank that. You. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Everything is just like it's thought about. You know what I'm saying? When you see shit drop, you're like, oh, they really taking their time. They really care about this shit. Mm -hmm. We care about this shit. We ain't just doing shit just for the check. We really care about this shit. You right. feel me? So it's like a different thing this way. You know what I'm saying? We're going to keep building this shit until it's the biggest. So tell me about your current roster that you have right now. Everybody that was on the compilation. Yeah. Break down each member real quick. Okay. We got Bobby Critical. We got True Story G, a little bird, and we got myself. Uh, True Story G, I've been knowing G since I was 10 years old. Wow. I've been knowing G since I was 10 years old. If y'all familiar with A1 and Supergroup, yeah. where we turn up here, goddamn where we go. Wow, that's right. That's G, you know what I'm saying? My name, uh, True Story G, one of the rest sound artists. I like working, they like working, so it's like one of the best best bonds, best world. Then it's with my guys, so these are my people, so I'm comfortable with them. And it's so crazy because I remember like years ago, it was New Year's, I forgot what year it was, it might have been like 12 or 13. Yeah. And they came to my crib, it was him and JT, and they had two songs that they, you know what I'm saying, they were like, Kent, which one you think? That, the one, the one, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I remember telling them, this the one. And it was New Year's, <laughs> and I swear to God, I put that song in the, in the car, we driving to a party, New Year's Eve party. Yeah. And we planned it the whole way, you know what I'm saying? That ended up being a single, so that's a crazy story. Actually, mm. that's facts. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Um, so True Story G, Bobby Critical. I've been knowing since probably like 2011, 10. I don't want to get in the long time. Yeah. About 10 years, you know what I'm saying? If you're familiar with the song with Michael Montana, do it. Yeah. Bobby Critical was a producer. Okay. You know yep. what I'm saying? We recorded that in my mom's basement. I remember that. You feel me? I so do, that's I how I know Bobby that. Critical. I didn't sign Bobby. Um, DJ Genius. You know what I'm saying? If, if anybody familiar with DJ Genius, he ran Georgia Southern on, on the promotion side, big mm -hmm. DJ. You know what I'm saying? I, I seen what he had going on. I peeped his vibe. I seen he had some motion. He was, you know what I'm saying, good DJ. My name is Genius, world famous DJ Genius. When I first met K Camp, I was a promoter in college. I booked him for an event. Um, you know what I'm saying? He came through. We were like pregame. He got drunk as hell and went bro time for performing. He was like throwing up and shit in the club. Damn. Behind a table, like, bleh, not trying, trying to be so discreet, like, bleh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and they kept calling my name on the mic, like, yeah. can't count it, like, bleh. And I grabbed a mic and went crazy and turned the club up, you know what I'm saying? And, like, you know what I'm saying? It was just times like that. I was like, bro, when I get it, when I, when I blow up, I'm going to make you my DJ. Yeah. And I end up making him my DJ. Man. Lil Bird, recently signed, you know what I'm saying? I met Bird, um, I want to say last year when I was on Switch Tour, Genius had called me and said, Hey, it's this artist. I went to uh, some kind of house and this, this dude named Lil Bird. Crazy. So I decided to sign with, with Rare Sound because I felt like they were encouraging me to do exactly what I was already doing. And everyone else I was talking to was encouraging me to kind of change and kind of try and fit into something that already existed. So I always just follow the people who creatively give me the freedom and kind of believe in the vision. Recently signed, you know what I'm saying? I met Bird. Um, I want to say last year when I was on Switch Tour, Genius had called me and said, hey, it's this artist. I went to uh, some kind of house and this, this dude named Lil Bird. Crazy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I checked his gram. I was in the UK. I was in London, bro. And um, I'm on his gram. I'm like, damn, this dude is hard. He sent me a link, bro. Right. And I FaceTime Bird. This is, this is crazy. This is before the studio was built. I was online ordering speakers. I'm saying speakers isn't that wall. I was trying to find some speakers to order. Yeah. And I FaceTime Bird. And I was like, what's up? And he was like, what the? F you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I told him, like, bro. I fuck with your shit, you know what I'm saying? When I get back to the States, I want to meet you. You know what I'm saying? I had brought Bird to the to the crib. We had the studio on Alpharetta. And I was like, I want to, you know what I'm saying, vibe with you, see where you at musically. Right, right. And I pulled up the session. Bird hopped on the, on the, on the Pro Tools. I recording itself. Mm. And I was like, oh, yeah, I yeah. like that. You know what I'm saying? I went to go play pool with a little shorty I had at the crib. <laughs> I came back. Bird had a hook and a verse, and I just laid my, my verse. And I was like, oh, yeah, I like him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I ended up signing a little Bird, and that's the roster. So let's talk about the compilation. Was it different for you putting this together, being that you had to incorporate your artists, different artists on, um, from your label? Yeah. Like, was there times where you had to tell them, you know, do this over or try it this way? Were you coaching? Or um, was it as, you know, seamless as when you just do a project by yourself? It was It was actually seamless, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, a few of the records I already had in the stash that I was going to use for my projects. Like, I had a few bird hooks I had on my laptop that I was going to use. Um, everybody, everybody did what they had to do. It wasn't no cut this over. 
I don't think we ever had like, I don't like that shit. Everybody just came in and added the flavor that they, they needed to add, you know? And you know what I'm saying? It's, the, the tricky part is just really like taking all the songs that have been, been, been recorded mm -hmm. and filtering them out and having all of them flow together. Mm. That's the part where it just like, it take time and you can't just throw no shit because I'm, I'm real picky on just recording and just dropping some shit. Yeah, I've yeah, never yeah. been a fan of that. Right. Since the beginning of my career, I've never been a fan of that. I've always been a fan of just flow. Yeah. The whole project, just every song going into another song. So that process probably was the hardest process and just taking shit that ain't going, add another song, trying to fill it in. But as far as like the vibe, we did a, we did a lock-in. Mm -hmm. We did a lock-in probably like two, three months ago. And I didn't record one record, it was Jay Lee. That's where that Own It record came from. Yep. Uh, the um, new beginning, like a lot of them records was from that lock in, so okay, it was it, it all flowed, just still turning the records out. So, so there's a couple of songs I actually want to ask you about. These were the songs that stuck out to me. And for those who are watching right now, you can actually click the link that we provide you yeah. with, and you can check out the songs for yourself, plus other songs off the project. But, yes. um, I want to talk about the first track, Cry to You. Yeah. You, you, you opened up a lot on that song, yeah. Uh, what was the creative process on, on that, and why was it the first track? Because, like you said, you you like to do your placements strategically. Yeah. Um, Crowd of you ever recorded at my crib, my condo? At, at, um, I ain't gonna take you out there. I'm yeah, you out there. <laughs> right, I don't there. put it out there. Somewhere, somewhere you know what I'm out saying? there. Yeah, I recorded at the crib, and I forgot when I recorded Crowd of You, bro. I think some had pissed me off. I think I seen some online, and it just it just it just, it just made me mad as fuck. And I went in the booth and I just recorded Cry to You, you know what I'm saying? I was just real like just in my feelings that day. And the record became hard, put it as the intro. Cause we had another intro, I had a whole different intro and I scratched it. There was yeah. a song called Ape I had on there that was hard. Scratched mm. it, put Cry to You. It was a great intro track, Thank man. You. Uh, you brought up New Beginning. Yeah. I really like that joint. True Story G is Sadie Hendrix, who I think is, is dope also. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you said that song came together in, 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 the, in the lock in. Yeah, I wasn't even here when they did that. Wow. I pulled up later that night and it was playing. I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? You know what I'm saying? I kept saying, I was like, oh, this the one. It's the one, you know what I'm saying? I remember I let Pat hear it, Pat over there, our generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody was like, ooh. You know what I'm saying? I just knew, I told G, I said, hey, bro, this your single. Ears went crazy, G went crazy, said it went crazy. That's probably like one of my top ones on that project. Yeah. My top one, though, is probably going to be the new birthday anthem. Ooh, let's go. And you know what I'm talking about, birthday, yeah. you and Yellow Beezy. Let's go. How'd that one come about? Because that one is That's out crazy, here. yeah, for sure. It's crazy because I'm gonna tell you a story about birthday. It was this interesting story. We had like a little party at the studio, right? Okay. My uh my trainer, you know what I'm saying? He brought a little, little some vibes through and it was one of the girls' birthday. You know what I'm saying? So we we drinking, we we chilling in the studio and, and we in this uh they in the uh in the uh area and I'm in the booth. Uh my boy Taco Baines came in town with his producers and they played a beat. And I was just shot. I want to take a few shots for a birthday. She's the one to get hot for a birthday. <laughs> she was in there. I was rapping to her. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. But I'm in the booth like, oh, this shit going crazy. You know what I'm saying? So you know what I'm saying. I had I had the birthday record. I had the hook. I had the verse and I had the open verse and I had a hook. And I remember uh, Beezy was in town. I had put her the patchwork on Beezy, and um, he had like probably like 30 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Left in his session. They had shut him down. I was like, shit, I got a studio down the street. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Let's go to my shit, you know what I'm saying? Do some yeah, records. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he brought his whole gang and we uh we put up to my spot. And when I'm in a session with artists, I don't, it's always that 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 weird mama where who gonna really, who gonna go in first and pop it off. Yeah. You feel yeah. me? And I ain't want that weird moment to be in this <laughs> session. You feel me? So it was a beat I already had before I went to his session I was working on. I was like, let me just hop in and just you know what I'm saying? Throw some vibes on this. And that was top 10 on Kiss 5. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I went in there and just, you know, top yeah, 10. Yeah. He had his verse like that. And I was like, oh, we cooking. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. fuck with bro. You know what I'm yeah. saying? This shit, this shit easy. So after he did the top 10 verse, we wrapped that up. Everybody was in the studio like, oh, this shit crazy. I was like, yeah. But put a verse on this one right quick. You know what I'm saying? I pulled <laughs> yeah. up birthday. I was like, add a verse on birthday real quick. He put his verse on birthday. He had got it out of, out of there as soon as he wrapped that verse up because he had some shit to do. So I always had that birthday record just sitting. Mm. And I didn't even know what I was gonna do with the birthday record. It was just sitting. I was like, either I'm gonna I'm, I'm save it for my album, which is gonna probably come in the fall, and then birthday gonna be old as hell to me, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Or I'm gonna try to find a way to squeeze in some, some new shit. 
So when Rare Family, you know what I'm saying, when the compilation came about, I was like, oh, <laughs> all we got to worry about is to get his verse clear. You know what I'm saying? If we get his verse clear, and I hit B's, they were like, we trying to get his clear. He said, hit my a &R. It was good. <laughs> Rest Third is day out. <laughs> Rest is history, Rest man. Rest is history. Do you find it challenging to be an artist and be a label owner yeah. and running your own studio? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That was my biggest challenge at okay. first. That was my biggest challenge. How can I be a creator at the same time, deal with all the back end and the business shit that take me away from being a creator? Right. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like I'm finally finding that per perfect balance where I can still make my art and still handle business at a certain, you know what I'm saying, a certain time. And I got, you know what I'm saying, genius to help me out with a lot of shit, you know what I'm saying? I like, sure. I, I make sure he, you know what I'm saying, handle a lot of shit so I can still be the artist. But I think I found that balance where it's just, I know how to play this shit now. Cause that was my biggest, biggest like roadblock. Like how the hell I'm gonna be doing emails and talking to folks and yeah. talking about all this bullshit and yeah. I still gotta rap and make the songs. The CEO stuff. Do you feel yeah. me? I gotta be the CEO and still gotta make, make songs and shit. But I feel like I finally found that balance where I still make time to make my music and I still make time to handle business. And right now it's flowing. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna find more ways to make it more easier. But right now it's flowing. So man, you know, we've been rocking for for a long time and I, I personally feel like you don't get the credit that you deserve. For sure. Not only as an artist, but as a songwriter and what you've contributed to to the culture. For and sure. you know, I've heard a lot of people in the industry, especially if they're from here, they they know what it is. Mm -hmm. They said the same thing. Do you feel the same way? And if so, does does it bother you? Of course I feel the same way. You know what I'm saying? I've been feeling that way for a long time. And does it bother me? I'm getting to the point where it don't bother me as much. Got gotcha. you. You feel me? It used to fuck me up mentally. Like, damn, what the fuck am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. For this not to, you know what I'm saying, to equal out to what I, you know what I'm saying, think it is. But at this point, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting to that point where I don't really care about that shit no more. You know what I'm saying? Long as my business is, is striving, long as my music is selling, I'm torn, it's just a word. Yeah. Slept on underrated. It's just a word, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, I told somebody the other day, I said, I'd rather be underrated than overrated. When you're underrated, they don't see you coming. It's real. You can do as much shit, you know what I'm saying? You can you can, you can, you can stack up so much shit and hit them on top of the head where it's just like, damn, where the fuck you come from? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you're overrated, they watching every move. You got the, you got the, you got the spotlight on you and, and, they, and, they, and they know your next move. Yeah. So being underrated is a gift and a curse. You know what I'm saying? Just... Give me like another year, and another year and a half, all that underrated shit. When, I, when I'm the biggest, on both sides. That's right. You know what I'm saying? What you gonna, what you gonna call me then? You know what I'm saying? They already called me GOAT, but it's like the <laughs> underrated GOAT. So I don't, I don't know. We, we gonna see what they gonna call me then. Bro, you've been uh, doing your thing for over 10 years now. Yeah. I've personally seen your highs and your lows, but you're still around. For sure. You're still making music and you're continuing to evolve. Yes. What do you think has been the key to your longevity? Keeping God first, meditating, having a clear mind, understanding that you can't control what's going on, just control what you can control. That's right. You get what I'm saying? Like, if I wasn't in that space and if I didn't have like, people really like educating me on what needed to be educated, like books I've been reading, you know what I'm saying? I, I probably wouldn't be in this position. Mm. When I really had to under, like take myself out of my ego trip stage, like I'm K camping, shit, I'm I'm gonna be hot forever. When I had to take myself out of that and understand like you really gotta learn this shit or you're gonna drown. You know what I'm saying? You gotta really teach yourself. And that's when I evolved and, and turned into a whole nother beast, you feel me? Cause mm. if I was still in that same mindset back in what, 14, right. 15, you wouldn't be talking to me right now. You know what that's I'm saying? Real. I had to educate myself and look myself in the mirror and, and peep out my flaws and understand who I was as a person, what was hurting me and what was helping me. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So once I, once I realized that and became one with, with reality, that's when I evolved into another level. Self-awareness. Self-awareness, bro. It's key, man. Break yourself down. You, <laughs> you got to break yourself down and build yourself up, bro. Well, well, look, man, as always, I enjoy sitting down and chopping it up with you, For bro. Sure. I, I've enjoyed watching your growth and your evolution. And, uh, you know, before we wrap up, I, I, I have a surprise for you. You know, you oh, gave shit. You, 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 you know, even though you went through the whole plaque incident and 
you know, I got my plaque. Yeah. It was a little bit late there, everybody else, but I got my plaque. <laughs> so, I actually want to return the favor to you. Let's so go. Y'all could bring that. Oh, bring that man. Out. Ooh, that Congratulations for having over 1.7 billion streams Damn. on Pandora. Damn. Only 600 artists on the platform, on the whole entire platform, we're talking across all Ooh, genres, wee. have over a billion streams, and you have 1.7 billion streams and counting. We about to put this shit right in the front. <laughs> yes, sir. That's hard. Man. That's hard. That's what it is. Sirius XM, That's Pandora hard. Playback, the virtual edition. This one's a wrap. We appreciate y'all checking in. Shout out to my brother K-Cam. Again, make sure you click the link. Check out the project. Check out the custom playlist that we did. And, uh, you know, we'll see you next time. It's too hard. Y'all think I'm playing. I'm about to tell my studio manager to put this all right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dick. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's happening? It's me, K-Cam, man. Welcome to Red Sound. Let me get y'all a toy real quick. To my left, or whatever you want to call this, production space. It's where the videos get done at. It's where the videos get shot at. I shot friendly in here. If you ain't got no money, don't come in here. Follow me. B room. Got my boy G in here. You feel me? The jingle, the, the spades, all that go down right here in the kitchen. Tell your girlfriend she can come cook up if she won't. A lot of celebrities come in here and do their podcasts and they book time. And here's my office. This is where the deals go down. This is where the lawyer talks go down. This is where the contracts go down. You know what I'm saying? Besides being an artist, I be in here working moves, playing the CEO role, as well as playing the artist role. I play a lot of roles. You know what I'm saying? My hands is always full. So if I don't answer your call, I'm busy as hell. Or I just don't want to talk to you. You know what I'm saying? Hey man, shout out to Pandora for coming to rock with me. Red family out right now, Kiss 5 out right now. Shout out to the whole team, shout out to the whole world, shout out to the fans that rock with the campaign. We love y'all to death. Now you gotta get out of here. You dig? I'm tired. Gotta go eat. <laughs> Phone ringing. <laughs> gotta go.